Hello, welcome to Technical Talks, our webinar series. I am your host, Bill Murphy, PE for ASP Quick Supply Company, Bowman Construction Supply and Cascade Geosynthetics. And I am joined today by my friend and coworker, Mr. Mark Sternman from ASP Enterprises. Uh, we are part of Hale Holdings Companies. And last month, Don Tiemann brought us my attention that we are the largest family owned uh, company in our industry for construction site supply materials in the country. And that's pretty awesome. And we're proud of it. This is a slide that Don included when we did this together last month. And we wrestled last month with whether or not to start this uh, fall series of technical talks with sediment control or erosion control. And it's kind of chicken and egg. We did sediment control. And here's a little bit of why I kept this slide on there. Uh, from our perspective, Mark, what, do you, what, do, what words does Don use there? Erosion control is proactive, sediment control is reactive. And you know that, you have experience with both. Yeah. And if you do a really good job at erosion control, you don't have to worry as much about sediment control. Correct. So another way to say that on this other slide, um, I was supposed to read this last month. I got the black letters and then Don got the red letters. Mm -hmm. What's that say on the bottom? Where is it? To always strive for erosion control, use sediment control while waiting for erosion control to fully establish. And I would agree, sediment control is the insurance for your erosion control yeah and there's a lot of variables time of year yeah uh, con site conditions and yeah. other phasing of construction mm -hmm. we'll probably get into a little bit of that today so i got on our website and i looked at the different categories that we have under erosion control we have a wide variety of solutions that we offer but it's always impressive to me when i go back through them and we're blessed because we can offer a lot of different things that kind of overlap for what they do and we we always have something available for so if you start at the kind of the low end of the scale, you know, and, and even before that, something that we're not as involved in is just traditional blowing straw, shaking straw with seed. So it's vegetation establishment in most traditional ways is the best first form of erosion control. Um, we do sell straw bales at a lot of our locations, but it's pretty, pretty normal. You can get them anywhere, everywhere and anywhere. So, and then you jump up a step and get into uh, rolled erosion control products. Uh, I have one here, and you can see some of those pictures. Does it work? It's probably not going to show up very good, but at the sample <laughs> of a straw closer. blanket. Uh, hopefully, every everyone's had a chance to see these or driving down the road to see a, a DOT contractor with a eight foot wide roll of straw blanket rolling it out and stapling it down. Um, starts from the low end of single net straw blanket and goes all the way up to some high end turf reinforcement mats. The low end would be DS75 all the way to my left. And it's a single net straw blanket. The D <laughs> stands for degradable. So it's a quick degrading net. The most popular of these temporary blankets is S150, why it's noted. It's a double net straw blanket, 12 month life expectancy. Here's a little bit more detail of the quick degrading single net and double net quick degrading and regular um these are the most the s150 is the most popular product we sell a lot of contractors would rather spend the four cents a square yard or so that it costs to get double net because it rolls out easier and the single net the straw from one layer will stick to the layer below it and it's just you'll end up spending more money and time and labor and frustration trying to to fight with straw sticking together one of it's gotten a lot more popular in the last few years that you know the standard was always blowing straw shaking straw and a lot of contractors have just gotten away from doing it i still believe in blowing straw when i if i see something in my yard my front yard where my kids play or pet goes i would rather shake straw than put straw blanket um because it could be a tripping hazard or something um so it's they all have their place but a lot of contractors on commercial jobs where where the public won't be it, it's a they just don't they want to avoid callbacks so straw blanket is very well received in those cases where one windy day blows a lot of straw away one rain event can wash a lot of straw away where straw blanket has a lot better chance of withstanding honestly the majority of the events um and it the easiest way to think about it, if you need straw blanket is if well-established turf can handle the erosion, straw blanket is similar in performance to well-established turf. So turf can handle two pounds of shear stress, 
double net straw blanket can handle two pounds of shear stress. And from the moment you put it in, it's starting to get worse, but vegetation is starting to come up. They cross in some if engineering. If you're blessed in a world where you're in yeah. an area where you can get vegetation. Yeah. We'll talk right. about that later. But yeah. um, what we talked about last month at the Nebraska NRCS was jumping from S150 to SC250. Yeah. Oh, sorry, SC1, S S150 to SC150. Yep. And the biggest reason to, to go up a level in product, it's also a level in price, is adding that coconut, you know, no one was a genius when we came up with these names or they came up with these names. I see it's just straw coconut, 70% um, straw, 30% coconut. The coconut adds life expectancy to it. So this turns into a 24 month uh, life expectancy. If you are planting in a time when you think it might take longer to get well-established turf, it would be good to go to. It does offer a little bit more protection. So higher shear stress that it can handle. And then the, the coconut, add some water absorption to yeah. it that and one of the really neat things that you don't really hear talk about the, when the coconut absorbs the water it makes it heavier and clings to the ground better too which is what makes it perform so much better and then jumping up to the highest level of temporary erosion control is the 100 percent coconut um it is 36 month life expectancy and much heavier uh, more labor intensive to install, but sometimes needed. Definitely with native native seeds is a good place to use it because some of them don't germinate very quickly. And then you wouldn't think of this, but it also doesn't bring any weed seed with it. So if you yeah. spend a lot of money on a native seed mix and you don't want wheat, rye seed or something, other weed seed in there, the coconut won't bring it with it. All right. And we don't have a lot of stuff in here about it, but... Uh, Curlex blanket is a similar way too. There's temporary Curlex blankets that I think every one of our location stocks, they also don't bring weed seed with them. It's a, uh, I don't even know what you call it, a shredded wood fiber. Um, very particular on how they generate the fibers to create barbs that lock together. Um, but it's a really good product too, also temporary. So what do we have after this? What's the next category? So... This is kind of caveat to all those temporary products is you can remove the plastic netting and go to a bio net. This is popular with some owners like in St. Louis, our main power supply, Ameren is a fan. Uh, our Metropolitan Sewer District is a fan. Everybody that likes snakes is a fan because- snakes... We've seen the pictures of what happens with plastic netting with snakes. Yep. And it, it produces a better product. It's a jute netting. It also absorbs water. It also clings to the ground better. It makes the blanket heavier. Um, sometimes we use this term like wet t-shirt effect. Like if you're wearing a cotton t-shirt in the summer and you get rained on and your t-shirt's clinging to your body more and feels heavier, same thing with the blanket. So, And I wasn't bad mouthing plastic. I've just seen the image that some people use to promote yeah. the bio net. In certain markets, we don't have anyone from Denver here with us, but um, they're in the I audience, think, I hope. Yeah, they, I'm sure everyone from our Denver office is logged in and taking notes. And uh, I think they are almost exclusively BioNet in, in other states. We do get approached a lot at some of the conferences and asking if we have some other alternatives. Yeah, now, we do have a, a, kind of an alternative between both with the plastic. I mean, I think it might be on the next slide or coming up. Yeah, you know. well, so then you transition into turf reinforcement mats. And it does change when, you know, when we move from in the Midwest where we're bigger on erosion control, rolled erosion control products. Colorado is bigger on the bio net. And, and then when you go as far as Portland, they do a lot less rolled erosion control and a lot more hydraulic mulches, which we'll, we'll get come into that. up later. So now it goes into a more term, a permanent solution, a turf reinforcement mat, which is just like it sounds. Um, and you'll hear the term TRM a lot at our yeah. conferences and our shows and our meetings. We're, we're not supposed to use an acronym without defining it so we didn't just say trms on here we do say the full turf reinforcement that yeah once we say it we can then say trm now we're free to use the act as much as we want <laughs> yeah so this really just dramatically improves the uh velocities that it can handle the shear stress that it can handle and it's an alternative to other solutions that people might not like uh maybe it's not the right application for riprap or something like that or it's a hard place to get a truck to to you know cause more damage getting the material back to it and you can see i mean the world of erosion control is a relatively small world and 
all those all those manufacturers listed on there we have relationships with all of them good we're blessed. relationships we're blessed. part of the part of the value of dealing with a company like ASP is we know all these companies and we know which ones are good or the best at you know they're all good but which one's the best at one particular solution uh which one's the best maybe at a crazy time like covid which one has more inventory than the other one so call us we know what's readily available especially in each of our markets yeah bring value and to start kind of on the low end, well, this has all of them. So the low end is SC250 and goes C350, P550. And then you can supplement it with even better anchors. Um, I brought one in. I got it. P550, which is in a plastic bag. And it's going to be annoying to open. Yeah, it might be loud to open. I'll talk really loud while you okay. open it. So they're all essentially the same idea with a top and bottom net and a center corrugated net. And then the fill material in the middle, SC250, again, not rocket science, stands for straw coconut. It has a 24 month life expectancy. And this is this one is so of the, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just bite the bullet and open it up. I know, it's annoying. It's yeah. Like... And you can even peel it apart some and I, I try and show. It no, it's a I'm sample. Show them the yeah, we're never yeah. going to use it for anything. Yeah, hey, you keep talking. So, this is probably the workhorse of all the turf reinforcement mats that we have. So we, yeah, we got the outer net on both sides mm -hmm. and we have the heavy corrugated net or the grid in the middle. The heavy duty corrugated net in the middle is what does the real work. That was like beefy, very innovative when it, when it came out and uh, probably brings the most value out of the whole thing and the loft to it too. So that was uh, awesome. That was I guess good live action. Live action. The, <laughs> This is the workhorse of what we do. The most popular one we sell. It is a go-to solution. And one of my favorite things about it is how well it vegetates because all of these turf reinforcement mats require vegetation to perform. When you see an unvegetated shear stress of three pounds per square foot versus fully vegetated up near 10 pounds, you know, it just shows how much value the vegetation brings. And the goal is that you never see it. You know, it gets vegetated in a short amount of time grass grows up and shades it and protects it from sunlight and you just never see it again and it does its work without even knowing it's there and as an engineer i've always err with caution and design with unvegetated you better plan for it because i'm a murphy and if i'm involved you're going to have that luck of a big rain coming before you get all your grass fully established mm -hmm. so you better have have a project that's designed and anchored and armored in a way that uh, it can handle the storm events before it fully vegetates it's a gamble to roll the dice on what time of year you're putting it in who's main who's monitoring the site to make sure it's properly watered if it needs water maybe reseeded some areas need to be reseeded and it depends on uh, not just the time of year but your climate some of us some of us some of our customers are in some pretty semi-arid areas so we'll talk to us talk to your local sales rep and we can even make recommendations on the seed mix that works best Oh, I think we kind of put the cart before the horse on some of the vegetation and how much value it brings. Keep going. My bad. Yeah, that's right. We got to, we got to yeah. get, make up time anyway. All right. So here's a project. <laughs> um, this is at a military base, a detention basin that needed needed to be protected. You can tell the difference in the bottom right picture where there's straw blanket up higher up where it didn't need to the same amount of protection and lower down where it did need um, the SC-250 that darker swale that runs curves through the bottom of it is actually transition map too. So the, we're going to get to those. Yeah, two. we'll talk about them in a bit. In this case, that extra protection in the bottom of the swale was there because there was concern that it would always be wet. So you wouldn't get good vegetation. Better plan to not have it. Yep. So you can take a step up to C350, which is the exact same thing, except instead of straw coconut, coconut, 100% coconut. Um, you know, I think it brings value when you share some of the faults of things with all of the, we're talking good about all this stuff. One of my gripes about C350 is that because of the 100% coconut, how much water it absorbs, it sometimes makes it hard for vegetation to grow up through it. Really? Yep. So it's, there are times if it's close, close call, I would default to SC250 before C350 because of that one, because the, the extra, straw helps the extra give you a lot of matrix. The straw, yep. Let's it grow up through it, but still, Heavy duty netting, top bottom, the corrugated net. Uh, here's a, a, a very flashy creek that water will come up 
this is actually a reinforced slope too. So there's layers of uni actual geo grid in nice. I think 18 inch lifts inside of that. And so it's still vegetated well, but um, that was a concern at some points. It's a good looking slope there on the bottom right. Mm -hmm. I'm checking that Q and A. What's the difference between S in S150 and DS in DS150? D stands for degradable. So the net, they don't put any UV inhibitors in the netting. So the, uh, that's what breaks down the plastic netting is UV degradation. And I so, alluded to that earlier, but we didn't have a slide on it. It yeah. was when we were talking about the, uh, the bio net, we were mm -hmm. talking about the totally natural products, cotton, fiber, yep. and coir. Um, I was trying to get to, there's another alternative for the plastics. Yeah, I would almost always go to DS-150 over S-150. You hear that, because, folks? There's a little tip. And it probably changes in different markets that have different, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm rude to our por Portland friends, but Should it rains be. all the time. So they, Sorry, don't get a, they don't get enough sun to break down yeah. the, the plastic netting. So. It is different out there. And so schedule lunch and learn with Melissa and Travis and Cascade, and they'll tell you exactly what works in the Pacific Northwest. We already showed them the P550. Yeah, sample, that was so the sample that we're we so out of order. So, so eloquently showed, but similar idea, top, bottom, heavy duty net. The main thing is it's 100% synthetic. So all that green fiber is synthetic, will never go away, and can handle significantly higher shear stresses. So, so pros and cons. It's the good thing is it'll never go away. The bad thing is for some people, it'll never go away. Yeah. So you just want to make sure you get a good stand of grass on it. Don't mow it when it's really wet and soft because you don't want that stuff getting caught up in your mowing yeah. blade. And oftentimes these are used in places that don't get mowed. Like here's a channel that they should anchor it down better, by the way, more staples. Yeah. We'll get to that later. Yep. So there's another very flashy creek, multiple solutions in this small area that is protected from riprap in one corner. TRM on the sides. There's plugs in this TRM. Uh, you can't really see it, but in that top right picture, just in front of the head wall, there's a culvert there. But in front of the head wall of the culvert, there's actually a hard armor solution called Ajax. So it is in a small area, a lot of different solutions used. And this is one of my favorite jobs to drive by. I sold this 12 years ago. Jeez. And must be old. every time it rains, <laughs> Every time it rains and I'm in this area, I go look at this thing. It's right That's off awesome. a main drag. And, you know, when you're when you're an erosion control salesman and it's raining and no one's moving dirt, you just drive around and look for erosion. I love that idea. Yeah. It's tune in next month. We're going to do stream bank stabilization and you'll hear more about Ajax and some of these other hybrid solutions on slopes along streams. Mm -hmm. So there are installation instructions. You can get them off the Internet. You can ask your local sales rep is a great way to do it. Um, all the manufacturers put a lot of time and effort into producing really good quality installation instructions. And if nothing else leave with, staples are very important for installation. We joke sometimes that the amount of staples used goes down as the temperature goes up and as the day gets longer. Mm -hmm. And so for, you know, straw blanket S150, the normal application rate is one staple per square yard. It's basically a staple every three feet. And if you stand in one spot, one that way, one forward, one that way. And uh, the number one reason why, why it wouldn't work is someone didn't use enough staples. And you get tenting. You get tenting, you get water gets under it, nothing to keep it from pushing back down. And the most important part, pretty obvious, is like the leading edge to keep it. And there's this super fun, I don't know why I always found this term entertaining, but like in that right side of that detail mm -hmm. there is uh what we call a staple check stop so you literally put staples almost touching each other all the way across usually it's every 50 feet down a slope and you wouldn't need this if it's a big flat area but on a slope every 50 feet staples right next to each other almost touching and if any water does get under it that spot where it's anchored so well with staples try to push the water back on top of the mat so the term check stop you like staple check stop i don't know it makes me feel like i'm <laughs> i know something i don't know why <laughs> staple check stop i'm yep. writing it down yeah you see like the little word art i added on the side yep more staples yep and there's another swale diagram like i said these are all over the internet google is your friend when it comes to these things and your local sales rep asking them for help staples are 
cheap. I mean, they're just crazy affordable. We sell them boxes yeah. of a thousand. Well, it's I was going to bring a box in from the warehouse. We often send, I mean, we do the math and we send the appropriate amount of staples and then they almost always have leftovers. So it is, you're like, mm, probably it's also it. something that an inspector can pay attention to. And, you know, the engineering community will always default to installation instructions, which are what it should be done, how it was tested. And it falls to a municipality or a, co a county inspector to hold the contractor accountable to using those staples. And if it's a private job, then it's just you paid for it at your property. The owner needs somebody to use, yeah, use out their them. best interest. So here's another product that supplements high performance. So turf reinforcement mats. And once it moves to high performance turf reinforcement mat, it's using something like a better anchoring solution, like a percussion driven earth anchor. Um, there's not a lot to it. It's not terribly hard to use. Driver it's, takes it into the ground vertically. Yep. And then you pull up on the anchor strap. Big washer on the top. It sets. Yep. So it's, they're awesome. A better, you pull a truck out of a ditch with this. Yep. Our high performance TRMs, we have a number of manufacturers that have some fantastic solutions, many of which include the compression earth anchors in some of their really high stress areas, whether it be levees, uh, significant creek bank, creek bank protection, steep slopes, erodible soils, and it also connects back to whether or not they expect vegetation and if they expect vegetation long term. So we jump from the high performance TRMs, and we could spend a lot of time on this, and we often do. In fact, very good lunch and learn topic here. I'm writing down the 127. That's a lot of. I would I would even share this as a lunch and learn topic to bring in the manufacturer with. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. Is I love that. I love when the uh, manufacturer comes. Because not only do they dive deeper for the questions that Rock had and uh, Maddie had, but they can show a lot of projects that show a lot of different applications and they can tell a story through the project. I love storytelling. That's my goal for the next year is to get better at storytelling. But high performance turf reinforcement mats are the cat's pajamas, man. I'm telling you, they're being used for miles and miles on big projects and they're trying to protect America's infrastructure. And it's public safety is at risk on a lot of these. So it's really important to do it right. Please contact us and help set up a lunch and learn at your office. And if our manufacturer can't be there on a day that works for you, they'll do it virtually like we are right now. They're very good at it. Jump segue, not a very smooth one to what we had at the beginning of the uh, presentation was at the top of the menu. Um, there's reasons why you wanted to put this after the rolled products. Yeah, it's mostly just popularity. like. When you go to our warehouse, you can see how much space is dedicated to straw blanket or rolled erosion control products versus hydro mulchings. I, I think this is the way of the future. I think this is where our industry is going to hydraulically applied mulches uh, with labor shortages and the price of labor going up, a less labor intensive product, more environmentally friendly. A big downfall to this product is you have to have a machine to do it. So And you have to know how to run it. Two guys in a truck can't do it. They do have rental machines. And it's out not there. a big downfall as much as it is like a barrier to market, which is why yeah. you don't have as many of these going out yet, but yeah. it's growing in popularity. It is. It's, I mean, it's like a lot of things now. If you want to buy a Finn Hydro Seeder, it's probably a two year wait to buy one right now. The used market is incredibly hot. So yeah. it's. And we have a variety of different hydraulically applied products and we call Hydro Mulch. And you've seen hydro seeding on a lot of DOT jobs. They add color to make sure that they can see the coverage. Yeah. Tracer element. Yeah. Yeah. Tracer element but it's very economical. You driving by, unless you're an expert, you wouldn't know what they have included there. No, you wouldn't know what was spraying. And I will offer, cause someone is probably thinking it, that green will only stay green for like a day or two. The sun will bleach it tan. Until they, drive, until they drive by and check the box that it was covered. Yep, but it has the exact same protection on day five as it does day one. Even when it looks brown. Even when it looks brown. So a super important part is coverage of this product, just like staples were important in the previous one. When the engineer specifies, I want 2,000 pounds per acre, you need to get 2,000 pounds per acre. Sometimes you can check receipts or tickets and stuff like that. But the picture on the right, you can tell, is less than the picture on the left. And they only blew it from one direction instead of hit, that's getting rid of the shadows. Most likely why there's not enough. Um, and it's just uniform coverage is is. Paramount. Just like the t-shirt. You don't want a holy t-shirt. Nope. You have a wet t-shirt, you might as well <laughs> yep. have it cover everything. Yep. You were just in this picture earlier. You like this picture. Yeah, it's so 
everything has its place, right? The right product for the right application. Sometimes you're on a job site where you can't get to a certain spot or we can't grade it or something happened and the excavator is gone or you just don't care. I want to save money. I don't need that to be finished graded, but I need it to be vegetated. If you put straw blanket on that slope, it would not go well. There's too many void spaces, too yeah. many spots for water to get in and start a reel or a gully. But if you make it rain hydro mulch, it's going to get into all the nooks and crannies if you use the proper amount. You won't so, have that tenting problem we talked about with a rolled product. Nope. You get good uniform distribution of seed, fertilizer, and mulch. And it's just the right product for the application when, you know, I don't care about finished grading. That's awesome. I told you I wasn't going to do Q&A because I have to lean forward here. Um, how small of a project is this economically feasible in terms of acres? I'm assuming you're talking about hydro mulch, and I would say... Yep. Um, I have customers that charge by the square foot and absolutely spend their days doing quarter acre yards and it's, it's becoming, any scale. That's where it's mulch. becoming more popular yep. is you have some contractors who are willing to do some of the smaller jobs because they want to keep that equipment moving. Yeah, it is. It, it's easy too. It's, mm -hmm. uh, some of the machines are a pickup truck and a trailer mounted machine behind them and they have everything on their machine to to do what they, they need can to literally do. walk out there with the hose and they point it where they want it and they get it where they're supposed to put it yeah now you've seen pictures of ones where they have the boom and they're sitting back they're doing a big landfill or a big yeah. railroad project and they're just shooting it from the truck it's very scalable but right. when they do residential yards they walk out there and apply it yep yep there's probably a bunch of stuff to roll through quick that's a big fall there is. blanket void space causes tenting starts a real or gully uniform coverage to all the nooks or crannies we need more staples yep Flexterra is the top of the line. This slide is just meant to show you how much engineering is in. I use the term recipe a lot mm. with hydro mulch, but there's crimped fibers, man-made fibers, um, water absorption stuff, tackifiers, all of it mixed in. And Flexterra is a top of the line premium product. It is priced that way as well, but it's proven. It's proven product. It's been proven for years. Used all over the world. And the reason we show this little graphic and, and describe it the way Mark did is so you don't think it's like the blown cellulose insulation that's chewed up newspapers you're throwing in your attic. Yes. This is not that. Not it just might come in a bag. Paper. Huh? Not just magazine paper. It's not just magazine no. paper. No, this is Very, high tech stuff. I can't even pronounce the word that most of these people that work at Profile are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, agronomist yeah i think i got it I think you, did right. you nailed it yeah. actually good thing we didn't rehearse you would have been no. nervous yeah but they do a lot there's a lot of science behind it very much yeah and i'm gonna go quicker just because we do have yeah. some slides to get through these guys are absolutely on board with virtual presentations oh, and office presentations it. they have they can take a lunch presentation and get, make it very valuable and they're fun Pro profile folks are fun they can make learning fun another you know right spot right application because you couldn't do anything on that except but we're not lying on the bottom of a channel with this by itself yeah that's a very important thing i don't know if it's on a slide somewhere else no matter what anyone tells you you cannot use hydraulically applied mulches in a concentrated flow the, even flexterra the highest end will not stand up to a concentrated flow of water so in a ditch um there are some ways to get around it with adding more products to it coming up. We got that. But for the most part, it will always fail in a concentrated flow. And then I, I don't want to read to them. They can read yeah. this. And you talked about access as a huge thing. Mm -hmm. we, we have we have a picture of something being applied. For oh, yeah, phone. there's yeah, we'll get hopefully that. some cool pictures coming up. I think so. Yep. And you just here, you're, this is what you're talking about, soil loss. Mm -hmm. This is where we talk about don't step on a dollar to pick up a penny. Some people care so much about getting the cheapest rolled product they can that they need to just take a beat, pause, think, is it worthwhile to do something better than just the cheapest? Mm -hmm. It's not enough to check a box and say we protected the soil. Somebody has to care about the long-term success of the project. Yeah, I just like this part because it's kind of bashing. These are different manufacturers, right? The guys that make hydro mulch aren't the same guys that make the erosion control blanket, one's kind of bashing another. But in universal soil loss equation, it's you lose it less soil. And there's going to be more enforcement on that yep. in, the, in the coming and years. It is, you need a lot more sediment control when you have probably not a articulating dump truck worth of dirt leaving yeah. compared to a wheelbarrow. But yeah, it's, it's kind of get your, get your attention. Yeah. 
everyone uses this picture. Doesn't everybody claim this is their picture? Yeah, <laughs> this is the most overused photo in all of marketing. It's for hydro mulch in yep. general. Yeah, but it's take the trailer down the road, spray it, and go. And it's, I mean, that's like an hour's worth of work, and you're done, and you're gone, and you're on to the next job. That's right. And then some places that you could not do anything <laughs> but this. No. And it works. I mean, these pictures in series here, I mean, they show the, show the product being installed and I don't have the, the dates on here. That could just be months later and you're going to get vegetation. That might be a year later. But. And a lot of times these pictures are like, yeah, but that's not from here. That's, you know, California yeah. or something. I've absolutely seen a person in a man lift with a hose spraying hydro mulch. And if it's in the nothing Midwest. else, it's safety. Yeah. This is what we talked about. Difficult access. Mm -hmm. This obviously isn't here in the Midwest, but the point is you could not do rolled products there. Nope, you couldn't. You and could get a tremendous amount of coverage pretty quick. Probably not cheap. But, but we agreed to keep it in there because it's cool. Yeah, it's helicopters dropping <laughs> motion control. Go ahead. This is where you can supplement in the channel application in a concentrated flow by adding another turf reinforcement. So you can map. use a hydraulically applied product in conjunction with a 3D yeah. matrix. Mm -hmm. So this is a TRM that on its own should be soil filled to get yep. it to work. It's too and it's basically, we'll take away the soil filling and replace it with spraying the mulch seed fertilizer oh, into it. Oh, 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 that sounds so cool. Yeah, so it's, it is a great erosion control solution. Again, it's not the least expensive, but it is very, very high performing and a very good solution. You know, we're not gonna have time for our last stuff we gotta get to. We're, yeah. we're about 45 minutes in, we still haven't got to the just fly through all Heavy these pictures. Stuff. These are neat pictures. These are pretty cool. I can fly through all kinds of stuff. I'm great at this part. Yeah. But I like looking at the roots. And, yep. You know, I live in the country. We're going to grow prairie grass so we can get the really deep roots. Yep. This is more of the green armor where you said yep. how to put it in a channel. Yep. You can use less expensive stuff on the banks where you don't need it and more expensive in the bottom where you do need it. That's awesome. Look at that. Yep. Now, one of the things we covered last week or last month was um, ditch checks and some of the things that are considered sediment control. We wanted to include these on this presentation. Yeah. So this is a tremendously long slope that water would pick up a bunch of speed coming down and potentially start creating erosion. These are not, you know, this is a perimeter protection product, typically. Like waddles. Like a waddle that is now being used as surface interruption to slow the water down as it's coming down a slope. That is a picture from who knows what year. <laughs> it's just fun to see. It is. Yeah, that is definitely not how it's done anymore. Because uh, <laughs> one guy in a skid steer is a lot less expensive than three guys carrying but it looks cool. six or five waddles. And this is where, folks, when you do a website, it's tough because you got to, where do you where do you put it? What category do you put things in? Erosion control, sediment control. This is where I said we have a lot of overlapping products, a lot of overlapping solutions. And you said early on, the best erosion control you can have is vegetation. Mm -hmm. And we're blessed to have some partners that are experts at knowing about mycorrhiza mm -hmm. and all the different things that go into fertilizer and all the different things that go into soil replacement, mm -hmm. soil amendments. Yep. Uh, we can, this is a lunch, these are both lunch and learns by themselves, whether it be Rocky Mountain bioproducts with Biosol or Profile products. Yeah, I think we got some pictures coming up for some wow factor. And, you know, this is uh, our Biosol partners in, in from Colorado that work everywhere. Um, these are their photos of, you know, again, it's an application you can't get to, don't want to get to, too expensive. Something dramatic happened. How do we get vegetation coming back? And it's a combination. It, Tom Bowman gets to go to some awesome meetings. He's, he's even working out in California a lot uh, with Bill, and they're doing some uh, post-fire reclamation projects mm -hmm. that are incredible. Yeah. Um, and they're just this is another one. I mean, they're just, they're just, our, pro, our partners are able to get into these areas and protect them with vegetation in a way that most of us couldn't even imagine being possible. And a lot of these things come up because they did a soil test and they know we need something more. Yeah. There's, you know, Mother Nature hasn't provided what we need because it was a fire or something changed. Um, so it's soil tests are tremendously valuable in, in and helping. They prescribe exactly what you need for that soil on that project. Yeah. yeah which is stuff that we can do too. We can facilitate getting done. Yeah, contact your local sales rep and we know how to get a hold of the expert to make it happen. I will absolutely drive somewhere with a shovel and a bag and collect dirt. I have done friends. it plenty of times. When I took this job, I asked Prenza, can you show me how to collect the soil sample? He goes, seriously, you're an engineer. I said, I know, but they didn't teach us how to go out to a field and collect soil sample. Well, I don't know that we do it right. And Prenza goes, 
dude, you scrape away the top and get mm. it down about three to six yeah. inches deep and you put the soil in a bag and you go do it at a number of different spots on the site. You leave without dirt and you come back with dirt. There you go. He made it sound just that simple. I'm probably not supposed to call it dirt. I, you're not supposed to call it dirt. I bought a soil test kit for my home when I planted a bunch of trees for my wife here last month for her birthday. And I found that I was low on about everything. Nitrogen, yeah. phosphorus, potassium. The pH was a little bit off. Um, so now we get into transition mats. We talked about earlier with the high, per, high performance turf reinforcement mats are awesome, but every now and then they need some heavy lifting. And we've got a few different products that fit in the transition mat category used primarily at culvert outlets or uh, point sources like a curb opening down off a bridge end drain corner and some hard transition areas where you got steep slopes. Mm -hmm. This isn't to be go over the entire project. Mark said earlier, you can use erosion control blankets on the upper slopes or hydraulic mulches then you can go to transition or turf reinforcement mats on the side slope then you can get into transition mats down on the bottom of a channel or toe of a slope this is another one of those hard words to say for me where it's you know you're transitioning from that concentrated flow in a pipe to a laminar flow yeah. in a swale and that's for the transition mat where the term comes from um there, there are a lot of different options in this one. It's a bit of a crowded space. We have a simple a sample yeah. of this one, but to be fair to the others, I got to keep well, going. Well, and there is, so there's like that one, it's very flexible, but requires yeah. something underneath of it. You can see the TRM underneath of it. It, yep. it will contour to the ground really well. There's holes it, in it, so you got to have got TRM to protect those holes. Stubby bottoms to it, so it's grippy to the ground. So that's good. But this next one doesn't need anything under it. This goes back to the installation thing, where if you get this on the ground staked down it will immediately bring value i've had people forget to put seed under it it still works it works great from the moment it starts it has a simulated turf it looks like a um doormat kind of like a welcome mat like a welcome mat yeah and it is so we have two versions we have a rolled version that's shear force 10 yep. and then we have the sheet version that's shear force 12 it comes with three by four panels the best part is it doesn't require anything underneath of it, like mm -hmm. Scour Stop, Shore Max, all the other ones. There's two or three others that require sod or TRM under them to work. I'll and show you one, one here on the next slide, too. So Tim Lancaster with InstaTurf sent us a whole bunch of slides that we could use, a bunch of information. We just don't have time, but he would love to do a lunch and learn with you. So please contact us and let us get, set, schedule a lunch and learn. And Tim will help you design your project as well. Flex mat. This is one that does need something under it, but it comes with it. And they have two yeah. different versions of what can, comes with it. We were going to bring a sample and then I realized it was heavy. So I didn't. <laughs> but you can see, we're on the second floor. You can see every layer in that exploded view to the left. You can see how it shows up to a job site in the middle where it's rolled um, when it's deployed in the top. And once it's vegetated, it's vegetated and weirdly mowed, because most often this is used in applications where you don't really mow it. But no, but it, it disappears too. I mean, it's down there doing all the, the heavy duty stuff and you can drive on it like low water crossings. I'm going to hope that the manufacturer is not listening to this part of it, but this always goes into <laughs> this triangle of, I can get two out of three things. I can get price, performance, and aesthetics. I can't have three. In this case, it's a really, it's really, really good erosion control for the price. It performs the performance is amazing it's incredibly especially if you use anchors with it and in my opinion the aesthetics are not so good well they have they it, they have uh cross plates that go in between those patties on there on the grid and you can anchor these down in some really extreme applications mm -hmm. like this yeah those are very steep side slopes that need it and you can't see very well but the cross plate anchors maybe on the bottom right i love how you're pointing at the monitor i am gonna see yeah. it you guys camera. Right, right right there, there. guys can't you see it <laughs> So this is a channel in St. Louis. It's a big DOT swale. It was on the front of that picture. You can see with a concrete line channel that had failed miserably. It was heaving all over. Water was getting under it and scouring. There's just caves underneath this thing. So they came up, rubble, rubbleized. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Crushed all the concrete, left it in the swale, covered it with topsoil, and put flex mat over the top of it. This was. I don't know, it was a day of excavating and crushing and like two days of deploying Fleximat. So this is a like almost before picture, a during picture, and then a fully vegetated that picture. That can't be the same place. I'm going to say two years later. What? There's yeah. a power pole and a billboard on the right. And it, oh my goodness. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And 
we go walk that thing once every year or two years and I mean, we can't even walk it anymore. What do you think a solution like that would cost you, Mark? Forty dollars a square foot. <laughs> yeah. If you act today, you can get Fleximat for. Yeah. I'm putting you on the spot. Oh no, Fleximat sells for like I don't know. They round up to five dollars a square foot. We're practically the, giving it away. The installation is like two dollars a square foot. So, pretty seven dollars awesome. a square foot. I know I'm being silly, but I mean it. It's pretty awesome. We don't have time. We're gonna have to hurry through these. Look, folks. We have so much more to offer you. I think that next month during the stream bank stabilization, I'm going to dive into some of these solutions as well. Yeah, most of these, I wasn't even thinking a lot of these pictures apply to stream link stabilization. Well, too. we're going to tee it up for them. Yeah. So did you want to answer so any did, of those questions? Did you we saw? just segue a little bit better? Yeah. Yeah. So one question was about blowing compost onto a slope. Uh, you saw that picture with Biosol and the bottom product was Proganix. Proganix is a hydraulically applied topsoil replacement. It is, I want to say, 88% wood, which is most like kind of what compost is. Um, it has a lot of other stuff in it that I can't pronounce, like mycorrhiza, and that's the only one I can even come so close to. So you use it as a soil replacement. That is a topsoil replacement in Proganix. It's like spraying um, the black gold out of your hydro seeder. It does not bring erosion control, so it needs to be covered with it. They have another product called Proganix Dual that does have the erosion control into it, but it gets applied at a pretty heavy application rate. It might be, and the soil test will help tell you what it should be, maybe 2,000 pounds, maybe 4,000 pounds an acre. So that's similar to it. There is a lot of people that will spread compost. Compost is amazing. Um, Can be. And you can, some, some customers, I have a customer that does uh, terra seeding, which is put six inches of compost down and then seed on top of that. Uh, the thing I dislike about that is they're putting down six inches because they know four or five is going to erode. So you're just Yikes. Like, setting yourself up to fail. Like, like we're going to lose a bunch of this stuff to the Creek River stream. So, well, we didn't rehearse this at all because nationally, some people are pushing back on compost pictures while you're talking because nationally they're pushing back on compost because compost can be made up of a lot of different things. Yeah. My, my former church has a compost pile that can become too lopsided for pumpkins or too lopsided for some kind of waste. Mm -hmm. And so then you actually could be putting more contaminants back into the water than you're trying to pull out. So not all compost is created equal. And I know you turned off that slide. I was going to leave it there on purpose. Oh, just, I ruined it. Just leave it there for now. I want to make sure everybody hears this. Biosol and Proganix are not equals. They're not the same product. We had them on the same slide because we were trying to talk about vegetated solutions. Mm -hmm. Biosol doesn't have any of the wood filler in it as a topsoil replacement. It is a fertilizer. And Tom Bowman uh, can talk to you as long as you want to listen about mycorrhiza and about what the plants need for uptake and to grow. And he's very good at that. Pro Profile has their own people who are very good at that. All of them would love to take a soil sample and then help prescribe something specifically for you. We're blessed to offer all of those. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure that they don't think that we're saying biosol and proganics are the same. Nope. Thing. One is organic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. One is topsoil replacement. Organic fertilizer, not a bunch of nasty chemicals you got to worry about. Yes. So safe for your kids and dogs that he told me my dog could eat it. And I thought he was kidding. I My dog dug up a bunch of little bare root seedlings that I buried with Biosol because he loves the smell of it. Well, when you in, when you live in a subdivision and your neighbors walk their dogs, your yard becomes the most popular when you put out Biosol. <laughs> they love it, don't they? They're super interested. <laughs> So well, hopefully they don't dig it up. Yeah. Here like, are some stream bank products. That well, we're going to get into this a little more yeah. next month, but Trexiana with Flex MSE, they love doing lunch and learns and virtual presentations. Joel Kennedy is ready to join us. Yeah. There's a vegetated gabions. In a we channel. still These sell gabions. Like hard armor. Gabions. Everybody that works for us knows about gabions. So wrap face slopes. Um, it's erosion control. These are definitely stream bank. This yep, one's live we'll state through we'll it. Next month. Wire facing units. Um, more hard armor. Um, this is probably, oh, this is the scour lock. I thought we put this one in the wrong spot. No, I left this here on purpose because it is erosion control and we'll yep. use it next month for stream yep. bank stabilization. Yeah. Ben Campbell does a wonderful job of presenting yep. this. This is a combination of that HPTRM using it in on the a upper way slope. that almost the easiest way to say it is creating a vegetated gabion. Well, you're filling up gabion what, basket. you're filling up what would be a HESCO basket. So it actually yep. is lined, not just a gabion, but yep. it's lined and you can put on-site in-situ materials in there. Yeah. Um, stacked geoweb, vegetated. We have a lot of pictures of those. Bridge abutments. Uh, these are more hard armor solutions that don't involve vegetation, which is weird for us. 
Well, right. weird for you. Yeah. Not weird for Bowman. Yeah. Not, not not weird for Cascade when they deal with the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, you're right. Some of our arid areas. Yeah. That one on the left is just a big concrete swale oh, overflow. Um, emergency it's like a staircase. overflow. Staircase. It is. It's called Armor Wedge. It's only been sold in the U.S. one time. Hmm. That was it. Um, that's a hard armor. It was stupid expensive. This the one on the. I keep pointing <laughs> at it. At it. The one on the left is like fourteen dollars a square foot. Thanks. Okay, I have other slides I didn't get added here, um, and I might include them when I do next month's stream bank stabilization. But Tyler Searle with Muscle Wall has pictures of a beachfront property in Colorado. It's our beaches um, on a lake that they actually use muscle wall and they backfilled it with the sand for the beach. They wrapped the muscle wall. So the home with their view of the lake, instead of losing their property to an eroded shoreline, now have a protected beachhead there that they actually built with muscle wall that's permanent and gonna stay in place. You mean a lake edge could suffer from like wave action erosion? Yeah, yeah. terrible erosion. Mm. Okay, so here's the summary. And if we were in person, I would have everybody show their hands. What projects can you help you with today? This is where you, when you get the survey from Madeline, please return that, add any questions you have and get specific. Let us know if there's some projects you wanna talk about and we can schedule a lunch and learn for that. We can schedule a meeting. You can have one of our sales reps call you. Let us know where it is and we'll have the right person reach out to you. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Appreciate you.